Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer book review, actually, the first book review I've ever done. Uh, normally I cover board games, obviously, most of you are familiar with those, but I felt like this would be a great series to talk about. Uh, it's kind of an intersection for what I normally talk about, but it's also on the same linear path because this is in line with TTRPGs and uh, board games to a certain extent as well. And I, as a uh, avid reader, I thought that maybe some of you out there might also enjoy reading as well and want something attached to what you also love in the RPG space. And so I want to talk a little bit about Arcane Ascension, the series. There are four current books right now out, and this first one is called Sufficiently Advanced Magic. Now there are three other ones available for you to pick up, and you can pick them up on Amazon. Uh, there is the On the Shoulder of Titans, the Torch That Ignites the Stars, and the one I have currently unread, The Silence of Unworthy Gods. There's also a secondary series called Weapons and Wielders, um, and the first book is Six Sacred Swords, and then finally Diamantine. All by Andrew Rowe. Uh, there's also a third one, I believe, from Weapons and Wielders. But because I haven't gotten through the fourth book in this series, and I have not read either of these two either, I felt like I should probably wait to pick that one up, even though I will likely read all of them. So what I'm going to do in this little review here is I'll cover each of the individual topics one at a time. Maybe I'll do, like, characters and world building and how closely it relates to our hobby and RPGs in general. What I liked and what I didn't like. And it might be that. I don't know. I'm going to do some cuts in this thing here because I've never really reviewed a book before. So bear with me if you've never... If you've, if you've never seen a book reviewer, maybe it won't be as bad, but if you have, then I apologize from the start. But let's go ahead and get into uh, the review for Arcane Ascension by Andrew Rowe. Specifically, the first book, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about the other ones as well. So the first thing to get into is just the world itself. If you are like a Harry Potter fan or like The Magicians, if you like that series as well, then Sufficiently Advanced Magic slash the Arcane Ascension series falls somewhere in between those type of books. Harry Potter is a little bit more of a light family read. It's pretty easy to read, and this one I would say is also fairly easy as well. And then eh, this is a little darker than that, though, just a little bit. And then The Magicians is a book that's definitely darker. That whole series is very dark, and it all plays in this kind of wizarding world where you could imagine yourself playing a game on it or, of course, living it through an RPG. Uh, this series starts off in a fantasy world and you start it just kind of jumps you right in to a dungeon this is basically a this book specifically starts off as kind of a dungeon crawl and it does that for a good portion of the book and then the rest of it is followed up with a harry potter-esque school type of a thing going on this is the world building part of my review i guess but yeah you're, you're, you start off with this character his name is colin and he has a sister named sarah which you'll learn about later and he's in this tower and he's trying to get an attunement. An attunement is things he'll get on his arm or his, his hand or his face or somewhere that represents one of the different types of things that, that you can do as a, a wizard or a sorcerer. And it's like, okay, some might be for mending or creating or dueling or uh, what have you. And there's a ton of different ones. There's unique special ones and things specifically registered for just a one little specific topic. And kind of like how um, Quentin in The Magicians has the ability to repair tiny objects. Uh, that would be technically his, um, whereas in this book there are, are, are many of them. It's like your proficiency, but you're given it based on accomplishing tasks in spires. And a spire is like a dungeon that you're trying to get to the very tippy tap top of. And each of the spires kind of has a god or like a, like a, a beast of some sort trying to guard and protect it. And it's ever changing. It has this crazy labyrinth style thing. And he has to go as far as he can to a, well, get to a certain point so that way he can accomplish his mission and be able to go to the school, the Hogwarts, the the break bills, right? He's going to school to become a wizard, but he has to complete this task first. And he's pretty adept. He's uh, adept at fighting, and uh, he has knowledge of, like, dueling and whatnot. But he's also a very timid uh, character, and you notice this uh, going throughout the book. And uh, the portion after the dungeon, which I won't want to talk about too much, I suppose. I want you to be able to read the book, but there's a lot of great stuff in that. That's the best portion of the world being in my, building, in my opinion. I really enjoyed that because of the character and uh, the character you meet, uh, one of the main characters that you meet in the, in the dungeon, as well as the different kinds of traps and whatnot. And it's very detailed. The dungeon is very detailed. You can envision how it is going through throughout the dungeon and experience it kind of with him and decide what type of choices he makes might be best for you or not. And just has a lot of that type of thing in it and it 
deviates, deviates from the plan you normally think. You normally think he's gonna do this, this, and this, and things definitely change. And they change in a really weird, but really cool way. And then of course, it's the school, right? The world building for the school. Um, it's, it is kind of like a Harry Potter type of a thing, wizarding type school with classes and dueling classes and uh, unique types of games, which you'd experience if you watch The Magicians or read the book series. Um, they have their kind of like trials and tribulations and whatnot, and you care about grading. And then there's little like final exams or like the Try Wizard Tournament has kind of like that twist to it in the school. And there's kind of an overarching story in this world, which is his brother is missing. Thing. He went in the tower and he never came out and he is looking to find his brother That's his main goal through doing all of this is to find the brother to see what happened Mom's off don't know where and father is kind of a, a butthole He's kind of a stir, stern not very nice guy and he doesn't like his dad They have this kind of a strange relationship and this whole Book series takes place in this wor otherworldly, like it's like a fantasy world, which is like there's different portions, kind of like Game of Thrones, of this type of world and th this type of like continent area and this type of continent. And there's spires here and there's spires there. And maybe even feels a little bit like the get playing Diablo 4. It kind of feels like that. So anyway, that's kind of the world aspect of this this, this book. It's it's fantasy and it's it's got this like dungeness dungeon crawl portions to it. There's little like sections in a lot of the books actually have the have a dungeon crawl or have something that involves RPG. So it, that's kind of the main reason why I thought this would be a really good review series to talk about is because of this world and because of what he goes through and how it feels well, if I were to listen to somebody talk about their D&D campaign, but really well done. Okay, so the characters. Uh, Corrin is the book's protagonist. He is the main character. He is the one you live the world through. He is the one that you hear the thoughts of and interesting intricacies of the world, understand the mechanisms of magic and all the different things that go along with it. There is quite a bit. And you also learn about him as well. And he is kind of a soft, spoken, shy, a little bit cold at time type of a guy. He has certain interests he's looking towards doing. Not really relationship meant. He's not really meant for relationships, it feels like. Like he's a little pushed apart from other people. And he has a very hard time showing affection and whatnot. I personally can't relate to this character all that much. Sometimes what he does doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but he's not a bad character. And I feel like there's some people that will relate to the character and um, yeah, he was just okay. But but who he sees and how he interacts with other, the other characters when he thinks about them, that's actually kind of a really cool twist to his type of character where he might think of this character as not so great. Um, and or, or thinks they're wonderful and maybe outwardly he's not very good at showing that affection and so he kind of is a little bit like a, he kind of like barks at them or he's kind of cold or distant and and that's kind of an interesting like how how that character works um he's also much better than he thinks he is at a lot of things he can actually perform a lot better he's a uh, more value than he should give himself credit for and there's a few things i think people can take away from him as to oh, why he'd be a really cool character and i hope to see some character growth more than i've seen so far he has some but it's really slowly progressing and it's more mental than it is outwardly physically and verbally which i like to see as we get i delve more into i just have my bout right here so we'll hopefully we'll progress more there uh, Karis is the weapons and wielders uh, protagonist. He is the dark brooding character that is um, a force to be reckoned with. And he is so seemingly like stern and cold and strong and, and like hard like a rock, but he has a wonderful character arc. He starts to progress and care for the people in this series and protect them and see them as family in certain ways. And uh, the progression of that character specifically, I really, really enjoyed. And the interest of his backstory I felt when reading this series, which is why I picked up the other series just to learn more about the character. Um, so I personally really liked him. His sister, Sarah, uh, uh, the main character's sister, Sarah, is, um, she is kind of a sister, but not also not really a sister, adopted in. They have a rivalry, which is kind of fun. She has had bad things happen to her and good things, and she's always kind of a twist. She's kind of a wild card. She's also got a nice little arc to her. There's Jin, which is also a fun character. He's dark and brooding like Karis, but in a different way. More of like, instead of the dark magician, more of like a brooding rogue that uh, might be maybe a secret agent or something like that. Um, 
And there's quite a load of professors. You'll have certain other characters that have like the ability to fight and uh, they have their own kind of character. There's one the character that I really like is a bravado type of a character. I don't want to give all the characters away. Once you kind of like get into the book, the teachers are fun. Each of them unique in their own way and they feel like Hogwarts professors do. And yeah, I, I, I like some of them. Some of them are okay. And the dialogue for all of the characters is fine in the book. Like I would give it a solid C, maybe C plus as far as how the dialogue is presented. Sometimes cringy, a little bit unfocused in certain areas, but overall good, enjoyable. I didn't really have a huge problem with any of the dialogue throughout the series. Just kind of, it didn't kind of take me back once in a while. I'm like, why is this? Why? Well, okay, okay, okay. So that's how the characters function in this series. Um, what else we talk about? We did world building, we did characters. Oh, okay now. Just the story portion. Like, uh, there are chunks of each of the books that represent chunks of the story. You have in this book here, the tower, and then the school, and then from the school to some other challenge, and then on to a train or a boat, and there are portioned out and they're spread very well and you you feel this kind of dungeon crawl and crawly aspect this rpg ttrpg type of a feel where you're, you're doing this one thing and then the next adventure you are onto that thing and you meet these characters along the way which you may see or may not see again as time moves on and you kind of push it around and it, it does feel like you're living a uh, an rpg of sorts and it feels like you can attach yourself to one of these characters and the story does a great job of keeping you intrigued there are always things that you're uh, going to have mystery about who is Jin? Is he really your friend? Or is Karis a good person? Or is he a bad person? Uh, what do the gods in the towers really want? Where is uh, Corin's brother? Is Corin's brother in danger? Oh, and then as you learn progressively throughout the books, things might change. And now you have other questions to ask. And there's always something to keep you hooked into being interested throughout the stories. Now, where I'm at, where I got to the, through the third book, I, for some reason, it just slowed me down. There was a portion of the book, which I don't want to talk about because it is, I want you to start with the first book and continue on. But uh, there can be a, a, a droll at times. And there are two reasons uh, for this. One reason is in the series, there is a lot of talk about magic and runes and attunements and how they're made and what the symbols look like and where you need to place them and what you type, what type of things you need. It's, it's like... It reminds me of crafting objects in, I don't, I don't know, like a video game. Maybe like Diablo, it reminds me of like modifying your character's stats and whatnot and getting it all perfect. And this is 22% here and 23%, but I also can't have this crit type of thing. I need this bone skip and you have to kind of piece it all together. So if you like, it's for, not for me that portion. But if you like intricacies on magic, because it teaches you about the world's magic very heavily, very well. And the person who recommended this book series to me, in fact, I started to listen to the audiobook for the first book while going, heading, driving uh, about eight hours to a board game convention. So I got to listen to a good chunk of this book. Um, and they, that was their favorite portion of the book, is how the magic and how the runes and the attunements all work. And it's very, very intricate. So you'll get to learn about that and feel like you understand it. There could be an entire book from these books talking about how runes and magic is made and constructed. And, you know, obviously you need to add more intricacies to it. But if you like that aspect of it, that is filled throughout all of these stories. It's not always often a whole lot to keep you like, okay, I'm gonna stop reading. Maybe it's like a page here, a page there, or a paragraph in this area, but you have to expect that that's going to be a thing throughout this book series. And then other times it feels like it doesn't get to the point. Um, which is more of my issue than that. that sometimes like that's why I'm kind of stuck right now. I, I will pick it up and I will continue because I do love this series, but um, you want them to get from the forest to the city, but they're, and they did the cool thing in the forest and now they're taking their trip to the city and I just wish that part was out of there. I just wish that they just moved on. Uh, and there's just a few portions in this book, in these books that do that for me specifically. But overall, otherwise, the story is great. It's compelling. There are questions and there are answers which present new questions, which keeps you entertained. It keeps you wanting to read more and progressively understand what's going on in this world full of mystery, wonder, and magic. And the story is 
definitely one of my favorite portions, especially when it gets involved with the fighting aspects and how the different traps function and the different gelatinous cubes can do this and do that and what type of ways they can get out of this mischief or what how much money certain things cost and how much how to find different ways to make that money to do this. Uh, it just really worked for me. And yeah, I really, really love that. Okay, so positives and then and then some negatives and then and then and then we'll say goodbye. Okay, so before we do positive, just really quick, uh, I'm a board game reviewer. So uh, if you came here for the book series, hopefully I did a decent job for you, but I cover this series, probably this is the only series I'll ever cover as a book because, or a book series, because I feel like this does a great job of intertwining the board game slash TTRPG series or style of works into a book series. That's the only one I've ever read. Um, when I came across this and I actually went through and got through quite a bit of the books, even though I'm, I don't read as much as I used to, I was pleasantly surprised. And, um, I very much so enjoyed it. Now, the, the, the wonderful first thing about the positivity of this, these books here is the adventures, the driven through the dungeon type of thing, um, the ability to feel like you're part of the adventure, and you could sense this as coming off of somebody's experience. Through, If, if, if the author were to have told me, hey, the, all these books was just a D&D &D campaign I made, and I took the best portions of it, and I put it together, and I created my own dialogue, uh, I would not be surprised. And that's actually fine. I mean, I enjoyed it, and that's what matters. It was entertaining. The story was well-written. Um, you know, there were certain aspects that were unique to me that I have never, like, experienced before as far as how intricate magic is. This series is more intricate in the magic than the magicians or even Harry Potter, right? Uh, Harry Potter is you say the word, you do the thing, and it's done. The magicians... So a little bit more complex, but not that much more. And then this one here is, it involves a lot of different things and at certain power levels and leveling up and that kind of a thing. And there's a lot to go into, um, which is, is, while not my favorite to consistently read, I do really, really appreciate the differences uh, in this book compared to this series, comparatively to others that I have seen, where it gives you a little bit more of that world as far as its magic and its creatures. There's a lot of things that are very detailed in this book, even just the dungeon crawling. It's not like I go into the room and it's got a bat in it and I fight the bat. This is explained what he sees when he walks into the room what each walls kind of look like, the traps that might be set, his thoughts on what or what, and then the discussion before they enter that room as to what they might want to plan to do. And it just felt like this really cool campaign. And, you know, making those choices that might be dire or positive, and it can come out either which way. And it's never going to be exactly what you expect it to be as far as the different, like, trials and tribulations that this character and these characters will go through throughout the book series. And so I really, really, really love that portion of it. Um, I also very much select Karis. I'm very excited to read the series of Weapons and Wielders. And hopefully once I get through this and then this, I can then start on these. And there's a third book that I'll have to pick up as well. And there's, this series should have, I think they said six or seven. So I need two, maybe three more books when they come out. But I have the whole series of this one. Um, yeah, uh, I... I, I, I I think my other favorite aspect of this series is that it's just a little bit darker than Harry Potter. There's a little bit more at stake in a lot of these cases. Um, it's not overly dark like The Magicians, which is probably one of my favorite book series, but it also has the wonderful wizarding world of a unique place, a unique plane, and it has its own rules and the way people feel about each other, and just really, really works for me. All three of those book series work for me very well, and I think if you're a fan of either of those, you probably like this one as well. Um, but yes, overall, this is a great series for those of you who enjoy board games and also enjoy reading or tabletop RPGs and enjoy reading. I would strongly recommend this series because, I mean, I I wouldn't have even made a, uh, a review based on this because I never make book reviews unless I thought this would be a cool series to read. Now, don't 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 uh, don't underestimate the amount of reading that there is, but just also note that these are easy to read books, and it's not like super tiny print. It's really straightforward. The books are um, you know double spaced, so you can see and read it well. But this is you know it's not super. But I would just suggest if I were you and you want to pick up this series, just grab sufficiently advanced magic and and start reading that one. I mean it's really cool. Now what the draw? I'll even read the first 
words that made me interested. It was the day of my judgment, and I was prepared in a thousand ways that didn't matter. It's a great hook. It leads you into wanting to learn more. <laughs> the character is prepared, but why does it not matter? I'm interested already. And if, if a book can start off with its first line, uh, something that's going to draw me in, then I'm already sold on it. So yes, uh, a great series. Okay, so negatives. Uh, some of the characters' dialogue's not great. Uh, some of the portions in the book, like I mentioned, are kind of slow. They drag along. The amount of explanation of magic for me is too much. And um, the main character is not my favorite type of character, but I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with him either. I just want to see him develop a little more. But that's pretty much the main aspects of it. There are you know, some little, tiny little things here and there, but I, I'm just not going to complain about them because overall, I've enjoyed this series. I will continue to read this series on my off time from board games. And I feel like this would make a great, great read for any of you guys out there that enjoy this type of genre or enjoy the things that I enjoy. So hopefully if you're interested, you will take a look at the Sufficiently Advanced Magic book. And then if you like that, go ahead and pick up all the Arcane Ascension books as well. And then if you really like the uh, character Karis, you can pick up the Weapons and Wielders series. Ah, but either way, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this little review of a book series. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer book review. If you're interested in checking out this book or the series, there is a link down below in the description for Amazon. It's affiliated, sorry, I could use the money. <laughs> and you can go ahead and pick up this series there. Uh, you can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We do a lot of board game reviews, tabletop games, that kind of stuff, written and of course here on YouTube, as well as the other sites that I post on. And you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you'd appreciate it. We'd appreciate it if you've seen more than one of our videos here, or if this is the first time you saw my book review and you thought I didn't do a terrible job, maybe you'll go ahead and subscribe to see the rest of our content. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed the series. And as always, I look forward to delving into a tower with you next time.